part B to open response style questions. This is exciting. A toy launcher that is used to launch small plastic spheres horizontally contains a spring, where a spring constant of 50 newton per meter. The spring is compressed a distance of 0.1 meter. Determine the elastic potential energy stored in the spring. So we're talking about springs, which means we need to go to our reference table. And here we have two formulas for springs. Sp the force of a spring is equal to kx, and the potential energy of the spring is one half kx squared. We're looking for potential energy, so we're gonna use that. So in question 51, potential energy of a spring is one half kx squared. This is equal to one half my K was 50 Newton per meter, and my X was 0.1 meter. Don't, Don't forget, forget to, to square, square it. it. This gives you a potential energy of 0 0.25 joules. You must write that on the line here in your answer booklet. Question 52 to 53. The spring is released and a 0.1 kilogram plastic sphere is fired from the launcher. Calculate the maximum speed at which the plastic sphere will be launched. The whole idea here is that energy is just transferred from the spring to kinetic energy. So that being said, the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the potential energy of the spring. And we know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So that kinetic energy I got for my potential energy, so I'm gonna plug in 0.25 joules. Notice I wrote my equation down here up above, one half, my mass was 0 0.10 kilograms, and I'm solving for my speed. You end up with a speed of 2.2 meters per second. Notice it says 52.53. That's because when I grade you, I can take a point off anywhere in this area. So you get a point for writing the equation and plugging in your units. You also get a point for answering the problem with a unit. Question number 54. Two 10 ohm resistors have an equivalent resistance of five ohms when connected in an electric circuit with a source of potential difference. Using the circuit symbols found in the reference table, draw the circuit of this. Well, since the equivalent resistance is less than any individual resistor, I know this is a parallel circuit. So a parallel circuit is gonna have a source of potential, and then a parallel circuit has different branches. So this is gonna be one branch, and it says I have two resistors, so this is gonna be another branch. There you go, that's it. Or you could have drawn it maybe like this. You could have a source of potential. You could have your branches come like this. That also is considered a parallel circuit. Or you could have drawn it like this. That is an example of a parallel circuit. There are more than one way to draw these. Uh, the first way here is the typical way with which you'll see a parallel circuit. Question 55. The graph below shows the relationship between distance and time for a moving object. On the axis in your answer booklet, sketch the general shape of a graph that shows velocity versus time for the moving object. Well, taking a look at the graph that they gave us, they gave us distance over time. So let's figure out what the slope is. What is your slope? Please don't be shy. What is on the X? What is on the Y? Like we did before, slope is equal to the change in your Y divided by the change in your X. In this case, this is the change in your distance divided by your time. Well, what does distance divided by time equal to? Let's check out our reference tables. And here we have it. Distance divided by time is equal to your speed or velocity. So the slope is equal to your speed or velocity. 
And if we look at this slope, this is constant. This is a constant slope. That's not changing. It's the same no matter where you are. It's the same slope. So since I'm moving at a constant speed, what graph says this? Just like this. Let's say my speed is 10. I don't know, 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second. It isn't changing. This is constant speed. Questions 56 to 58. A ray of monochromatic light passes from medium X into air. The angle of incidence of the ray in medium X is 25 degrees. Using a protractor, measure and record the angle of refraction into the air with the nearest degree. When we take a look at this with a protractor, notice how this protractor is beautifully lined up here at the bottom. The center of that protractor and the crosshair is following that boundary between the surfaces. Meanwhile, right through that crosshair, again, it's following my normal line. Ooh, that looks good. I always count from my normal over, and since my normal is starting here at 90, this is actually gonna be zero when I count, so at zero. 10, 20, 30, this is 40 degrees. So this angle here is a 40 degree angle. Let's write that in on our booklet. Now we wanna calculate the absolute index of refraction of medium X. Well, this is gonna be using good old Snell's law. So let's go to our reference table and look it up. Since we're talking about a wave, this is under the section of waves, Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. We must write down our formula in our answer booklet. From here, we plug in our values. The first substance is what we want to find, which is N1. The first angle is the sine of 25 degrees. If you don't put that degree symbol, it can't give you a full credit. N2 is error, that's 1.00, which you can look at your list of indices on your reference table, times the sine of that 40 degrees that we just measured. This will give you an N1 value of 1.52. If they asked you what this substance would be, you'd have to go to your reference table and look it up. 1.52 ends up being crown glass, but they don't ask you for the material this particular year, but other years they have in the past. So just be ready to look up that material. Keep on going with those part two questions and remember to label your equations and units. Click ahead to page 13 or go back and refresh your memories with some multiple choice questions. Let's get it.